Hello, this is The Watchdog, and welcome back to Fun with Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review the Suka May 2004. Let's start with the wrist check. I'm wearing this Pagani Design PD1671 version 2. And Grogo is wearing my Smeal 9320. Grogo said that space pirates raided Carson Teva's homeworld of Adelphi and injured his wife and children. So he asked Mon Mothma if he could take his squadron to attack the pirates. Grogu said Mon Mothma gave her consent, but asked Carson Teva to sit this one out since his desire for revenge might cloud his judgment. He told her, it's my sortie and I'll fly if I want to, fly if I want to. You'd fly too if it happened to you. All right, let's take a look at the watch. This is a Sukume, so it does not come in a box. They rarely ever do, but that's fine. What would I do with the box anyway other than put it on the shelf? But here it is. I've had over a dozen Tsukumis on my channel, and my most popular video ever is the Tsukumi 1816, which looks like a Casio Oak. This 2004 is shaped like a Nautilus, but fully digital, which is something Patek just doesn't do. This is what Tissot should have done with their digital PRX and gave it a full display. I ordered the watch last December, but it somehow got lost in the mail, and I even went through the process of finally getting a refund after the AliExpress store I ordered it from finally relented, only to have it show up unexpectedly a few days later. Don't worry, I reached out to the store, and they sent me another bill, so this watch is fully paid for. This 2004 comes in four colorways, gold, rose gold, silver, and black. Each colorway comes with a positive or negative display option. I normally prefer a positive display because I think they are easier to read at my age, but I like the look of the negative, so I went with that. The watch is 37.8 millimeters if you measure at the flats of the bezel, but 42.3 millimeters ear to ear. 48 millimeters lug to lug with inverted end links. It's 10.8 millimeters thick, and the lug width does not apply, but it's 23.6 millimeters where the bracelet meets the case. And it weighs 99 grams on the supplied bracelet with one link removed. The bezel is shaped like a nautilus and it has the vertical brushing of a nautilus. So it looks kind of nice. And then we have the dial. It says Tsukume up top and then it says dual time on the bottom. And then we have these uh, little symbols here next to the pushers to help let you know what they do. Then this is the main time display. We have the time on the bottom and we have a little P for PM. And then it says dual time Tuesday 416 weekend date. And this is a perpetual calendar. You do set the year so it does handle leap year for you. You go ahead and press the button on the bottom left, and it's, that's the mode button. Then it sets you to alarm mode. Then it moves you to stopwatch mode. Then it moves you to the second time. Then it moves you to the countdown timer. And then it's back to the main time. To set the main time, just hold down this button here. I'm not going to go over setting it. We all know how to set a watch. It's not that complicated. This top right button is a toggle button and you press it and it sets your watch to 24 hour mode. So that's nice. Some watches you have to actually set it to 24 hour when you set it. So it's nice to have the toggle. One thing I wanted to show you though, when I put it on the second time, see it says PM, so we're in the PM. But if I press this button, it does not toggle the second time to 24 hour time. So you can't do 24 hour time on the second time, only the first time. So that's going to be a gripe and groan. Then we have a press on case back. You only get 30 meters water resistance. At least it says water resistant, not waterproof. I don't like it when they say waterproof because they're not waterproof. But 3 ATM, there's the model number 2004. Then it gives you the battery code CR2032 so you know which battery to get when you need to change it. Then I'm not sure of the movement. I didn't feel like taking the case back off just to show you. 
Then we have the bracelet. The bracelet, believe it or not, is solid links. But when you look at it, it says stainless steel. And yeah, it probably is stainless steel. But there's no way this is 316L steel. It just seems to be much cheaper, much lighter. So I don't know. But here's a extra link. As you can see, they are solid. They're not hollow. Then look at here too. A lot of these uh, integrated bracelets, they don't articulate right here and this one does so that's nice i like that and we have push pin adjusters not screw pins i'm perfectly happy with push pins and then believe it or not you have a clasp and not a butterfly clasp but there's no micro adjust so that's unfortunate i always like to have micro adjust because these links are rather big, so if you want to get the perfect fit. Of course, this is only a 100-gram watch, so the perfect fit isn't as necessary as a heavier watch. And this is also a fake H-link. They have got these little grooves here to make it look like an H-link, but no, they're solid links. Here is the watch at my seven and a half inch wrist. It looks nice. It wears nice. It is a pretty good watch for the money. This only cost me $10. So I only removed one link though. So if your wrist is bigger than seven and three quarters, you are going to need a different bracelet or more links. And I don't know if you can ask for more links on a watch this cheap. Of course, a watch this cheap, you could just buy two of them and then you could have extra links because it's only a $10 watch. And here's the watch on a strap designed for a PRX. That looks really nice. So a PRX strap will work for this watch. And the nice thing too is you got the push pins instead of the little tiny spring bars, because I found that using the little spring bars is quite difficult but the push pins are nice and easy. So that works great. Looks great. I have no clue if a metal bracelet designed for a PRX will work because straps are much more forgivable. So the holes don't have to line up precisely where a bracelet they would. So I don't have a PRX shaped bracelet to test that. And here it is. Let's check out the backlight. See, as you can see, the backlight's pretty good. It's nice and even. It's not one where the light's on a corner or something. It doesn't display properly. So it's a pretty good backlight. I like it. What I like about this watch? Well, it's a full-featured dual-time digital watch with four buttons, not three. I like the knowledge shape of the case. I like the even backlight. I like the fact that you can put a PRX strap on this if you don't like the bracelet. What are my gripes and groans? Fake H-Link bracelet is too short. No micro adjust on the clasp. And no 24-hour option for the second time. Do I recommend this watch? Sure, it's only $10 and it looks and wears nice. And I really think this is what Tissot should have done with their digital PRX. Gave it a full featured digital watch and not just the time like they did. And I think that would have went over a lot better. So if you do like the digital PRX but don't like the fact that it just doesn't do much, this might be a good choice for you. Well, thank you for watching my review of the Tsukume 2004, and I will be back with an unboxing. I got two watches to unbox, and they are not from AliExpress. Be sure and like and subscribe to my channel, and if you like this watch, be sure to use my affiliate link, and I will get a tiny, tiny commission. And be sure to check out my Member's Choice program. I ordered the first Member's Choice watch, so members will be able to get to see the unboxing when I get it. Bye.